Fortune Faded by, uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers on XFM 104.9 with Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton for the last time. Yes, we've said that before, of course. So don't yeah. get your hopes up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've had some highs, there's some lows, some laughs, some yeah, tears. Some Carl, tears. you're concentrating. Lots of tears, mainly from the audiences. Yeah. Now, uh, before we get into that, before we get into talking about maybe some of the high jinks we've had, looking back, looking forward as well. Yeah. Uh, I came in, Carl was sitting at the desk, he went, all right, I went, all right, yeah. He went, see that Alan Clark diaries? I went, no, I didn't, he went, uh, no, I a lot of people talking about it. He went, I've never kept a diary. <laughs> Keep the diary will always get you into trouble. <laughs> and I said, like Anne Frank, what did you say, Carl? The woman in the cupboard? That's what he said. The woman in the cupboard. And I went, save it. Save it. You nev never speak to Carl off air. Save it all I from know. when we're on the wireless. He went, but what did she do? What did she do except be in a cupboard? What did she <laughs> have to write about? And I said, well, her thoughts. Do you know, do you know Anne Frank? That's all, all I know about Anne is there's no point pretending it. Anne! <laughs> that I know Quite, stuff. Yeah. Right, um... Well, so, tell us everything you know about Anne Frank. Uh, she was in a cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else? If she didn't do that, I wouldn't know about her, seriously. <laughs> That's all I know about her. <laughs> yeah. So what did she do? But what well, do you, how do you think we know, about, we, kn we know about, we know about her cupboard because of her book, don't we? But hang on, what, what, in the bigger scheme of things, why was she in a cupboard? I, I, I don't know. Right. I honestly don't know. You don't know anything else about Anne Frank beyond the fact that, to quote you, she was in a cupboard. Well, what's she done then? You tell me, why should I know more about Firstly, her? Firstly, I don't think she was in a cupboard. <laughs> she wasn't in a cupboard. She was in an attic. All right. Yeah. So yeah. what was she doing? She was hiding from the Tidy Nazis. Nuts. <laughs> she was hiding from the Nazis. But isn't that the first place they'd look, sort of? <laughs> <laughs> work, work from the top down. <laughs> Oh, they weren't specifically looking for Anne Frank. <laughs> they weren't going, where is she? Where's Frank? If she gets that book out, we are in <laughs> deep shit. We've got to stop the book. <laughs> they were just looking generally. Uh, she what? was, I think she, what, she, she was 13, 14, she was yes. hiding, she was Jewish and she was hiding, just in Amsterdam, didn't she? Yeah, as much of her family were having to hide, being yeah. helped by, you know, friends, yeah. non-Jewish. In, in a cupboard. In a, I mean, a cupboard, cupboards, you know. And how long? You know, how long did she sort of hide up there for? Until so she was caught. Long enough to write a book. So she even got caught after all that. What do you mean, so she even got caught? We're talking about one of the great, you know, humanist tragedies of our times, and you're going, she couldn't even stay hidden. What do you mean, did she get caught? No, I'm just saying, uh, like, you know, it's not a great tip then, is it? Do you know what I mean? She didn't do it well. She didn't hide until I escaped it. She her got diaries caught. are not a manual on how to hide from people. It's not how to win <laughs> at I don't know seat. anything about her. And we might be going down a, 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 some ground that's a bit dodgy. I don't sure. know enough about it. Maybe it's best just leaving it. All I was saying is yeah. diaries, do you know, what, what do you do them for? Have you kept one, Steve? Never kept a diary, no. Right. I can understand your fear that it might get discovered, someone might read it, find out all about your inner secrets. Of course, the good thing about you is you tell everyone what you think about them. Yeah. Yeah, but not yeah, there, there, there was to find a diary and go. Oh God, I can't believe it. Carl doesn't like my haircut. Yeah, yeah. Carl think, Carl thinks I look like Dave Hill from Slade. <laughs> yeah, I told you that, didn't I? Yeah, I told you that. Do you think they'll last though, diaries and that? <laughs> no, because they were a bit of a time killer, weren't they? It was something to do at the end of the day. Whereas now these iPods and that. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's fantastic! <laughs> the, iPod, I mean. the iPod of Anne Frank. Yeah. yeah the I mean. new from Sony. That'd yeah. be great, wouldn't it? All the greatest hits. <laughs> Who could forget? <laughs> oh. Well, dear. we didn't leave that then. I didn't Should know it was that? that deep. I thought it was just like a, you know. You thought it was like, didn't you? Adrian Mole type did, thing. Did, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, what are we doing? Oh. Oh. Thorns, from my favourite album of last year, that. And, uh, I can't remember. We'll be doing a bit of that, playing some of our favourite songs. We've, uh, got a couple of requests. Oh, in really? fact, yeah, got a couple. One of them was celebrity requests, Matt Lucas from, oh, yeah. uh, Little Britain. He's yeah. listening in. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, is, is it your last show? I said, yeah. And I said, do you want me to play a record? And he said, what's your favourite group? Guess Matt Lucas's favourite group. Now, remember, him and David are 
the new darlings of comedy. Yeah. They're cool, they're trendy, everyone li loves Little Britain, they're comedy geniuses, they're only gonna get bigger. What's his favourite group of all time? Um, oh, that is tricky. Uh, level 42. Uh, new. Carl, have a guess. Well, it's gonna be something weird, innit, if you're saying this. Well. So, uh, how old, how old's the band? Uh, they're probably about as old as him. How old's no, he? Oh, Carl, have a guess. Abba. No, it's, yeah. uh, why did you say Abba? They're good, aren't they? Um, <laughs> no, it's The Proclaimers. The Proclaimers? <laughs> yeah! Really? Yeah. And I know he's listening, but, you know. I mean, there's nothing wrong with The Proclaimers, I just can't imagine anyone getting that excited about them. I bet that's why he likes you, because you, you hang out with him, don't you? I do hang out with him. He, he thinks he's- he's, <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like the closest thing, he, yeah. did, he, he knows one of The Proclaimers. Wait till he meets my twin brother. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's gonna have a field day, he isn't he? It. Yeah. So I, I was honest. I said I, I can't play the Proclaimers, but we're playing another. Where, the, what, what, where did they come? Because I don't really remember the Proclaimers, particularly from when I was. Well, young, let yeah. me give you a little blast. I gave a little, a little, <laughs> but in two part harmony. <laughs> of course, that was the, that was the but main thing. They were thing. very popular for a while, weren't they? I think they had um, sort of three big hits in yeah. sort of about nineteen eighty. What one was it? Yeah. Oh, I forget. Yeah, uh, is Scottish. Right. They did sing in Scottish accents, which I thought was quite refreshing. They didn't yeah. do the fake uh, American thing. No, that that was that was good. Yeah, but again, I just can't imagine sort of being in that. When when would I be in the mood to put on a Procla Proclaimers record? When you've run out of Crankies stuff, I suppose. <laughs> I guess so, yeah. If you've, if you've played all your Crankies records, <laughs> yeah, there's, uh, yeah, and you the know, Muppets album. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pop on the Proclaimers. Sure. Now we were talking before the break about um, Anne Frank in her cupboard. Yes. Yes. Now- I'm still a little bit concerned that Carl's not quite got his head around Anne Frank's diary. Yeah. It's not like a children's book, it's not like The Lion, Anne Frank and the Wardrobe. <laughs> no, She's not, doesn't no. go into a fantasy land when she goes into the attic. I'm just glad that old Mother Hubbard didn't help the Nazis. <laughs> sure. Because that's the first place she'd yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it? The Nazis go, we've, uh, we've, we've got old Mother Hubbard, she thinks she knows where she is. Yeah. She'd have gone yeah. straight there. I think with Hubbard, it's like, uh, if I just briefly mention Hubbard. <laughs> um, <laughs> now, Hubbard goes to the cover to get, I can't remember exactly. She a goes, poor dog, a bone. She goes to get a dog, the dog, a, a bone. bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was the bare. Cupboard was bare the poor and dog so had the poor dog had is there, is there more to that than I, because that's all I remember. Is there, is there further verses? Does she finally get a bone? Does she go on an adventure? Oh, what, you mean the second verse is, then she looked in the fridge <laughs> and realised that's where she kept the bone, yeah. and so the dog was laughing. <laughs> exactly. No, there isn't another verse. There's not, that's all of it. I it? think so. Oh, no, went to the cupboard to get a bottle alone. When she got there, the cupboard was bare, and so the poor dog had none. none. No, I think that's the end of it. I think it's a moral. <laughs> it, I think it? it's a moral that, um, what? What's the moral? Well, well, uh, if you go, if you got a dog, keep some bones in the cupboard. <laughs> yeah. Right. Because I always, have, even as a kid, I remember thinking that it's quite a tragic sort of picture they paint. I imagine maybe she's it's lost short, her- It's short, isn't it? It, it is, is short, short. It's, it's over, isn't it? It's, it's, uh, that's amazing. But she, I always wondered whether perhaps she's had a nervous breakdown, maybe her husband's died recently, she's just not got any food she in. She doesn't know, she's just she doesn't really know what's going on, the dog's, na you know, yapping away, eventually she kind of wakes out of this kind of depressed stupor, she goes to the cupboard, there's nothing there. It's just a really depressing, morbid, Sort of tell. I don't know if maybe it's originated from something in history. I know that Jack and Jill went up the hill and they fell down again. That's a story about illicit lovers. That was apparently based on that. Uh, obviously, Ring a Ring of Roses. It plague. Dates back to plague times. So yeah. I don't know about Hubbard. Um, Humpty what? Dumpty. Not so <laughs> sure about this. Well, I, I. This is something I remember as a kid thinking. What? At what point <laughs> was it decided that Humpty Dumpty was a giant Eggman? I don't know because there's it's nothing not in the actual in the rhyme. rhyme. There's no actually. It's not Humpty Dumpty. It's not the Eggman at all. all. I don't know. My my concern is more if I mean his parents were a little bit cruel because if you are <laughs> the Dumpty. Dumpties of yeah. say Surrey, <laughs> yeah. don't call your firstborn Humpty. Yeah, because straight away it's going to be embarrassing for yeah. him at school, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know what it. I'm just saying. Well, I'm trying to go all the kinds of things like that. Is that it as well? That's all of it. Oh, And God. also, I don't mean to be pedantic, because I, I know it's a, a children's Is, is it like an Edward Lear thing, or- that's before that, be. is it? But it, I don't mean to be pedantic again, but if you're gonna- if you've got a giant Eggman and he's fallen into bits, yeah. you know, all the King's men, fine, they're there, they can piece that together yeah. again. Don't send horses in. No, because they- That's just a whole eggy, horsey mess. Not dexterous enough, <laughs> exactly. they they're, they're gonna make it worse. They're just gonna be standing on it. They are gonna make it, it worse. It's not they're great, just standing on it, get the horse out of the way, no, he's definitely not- But again, maybe I'm sure some of the, you know, the mental people- It was probably- it was- if it was- is it pre-Lewis Carroll or- 
if it's Lewis Carroll, it just came with the illustration. I guess but so. Some, he gave it to someone to illustrate. I go, illustrate, I'm jumping. He goes, we've made him an egg. Yeah, a sort of egg with eyes and a face. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I suppose, because the moral of that is, if, if you're fragile, if you're an, if egg, you're an enormous egg, don't Dumpty, the wall. Get down from the wall, I'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll tell you what, there'd be no That's medical- That's to happen. Yeah. Frankly. I don't know, Carl, what, what was your favourite nursery rhyme when you were growing up? Uh, didn't really do that much reading as a kid. You joking. You surprised me. Um, you joking. <laughs> uh, one's- What's the one with, um, loads of people in a bed? What's that one? Oh, there was one of the beds and the little one said, roll over. Yeah. yeah. No, th cause that's not really even got a story to it, is it? That's but just- hold on though, I'll stop you there. It doesn't even say people. It says there was ten in the bed and the little one, little what? It, they <laughs> could be anything. I don't know what they are. Roll over, and they all rolled over and one fell out. There was nine in the bed and the little one said, roll over. Now again. where is the little one in the I bed? I don't know, but I, 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 worse than that, what has he got over the other nine? But he can demand they roll out the bed. And why is no one getting back in? Yeah, they, they just, just lie on the floor. We're here now. Yeah. I don't know. Is how, he, how does that end as well? What, where's, where's that going? It goes on, there was one in the bed and the little one said, again, he just says, presumably he's telling himself roll over. Yeah. There was one in the bed and there was a roll over. So, like, so he rolled over and one fell out, that's him. That's him. There was none in the bed and the little one said roll over. So now he's calling the shots, presumably laying yeah, on the pile there. of others. They're just still rolling around. I don't know, I don't know, Carl. We've got to look into this. If anyone knows why Dumpty was an egg, if, if Hubbard <laughs> fa eventually found a dog a bone and what was the little one doing? What was the little- <laughs> what did the little one think he was doing, for well, God's sake? When yeah. I saw my dad last year, uh, he was telling me about one, about a fella who's got some clothes you can see through. What's that one? You don't the mean em the Emperor's New clothes. clothes? Yeah, what's- what's that one about? Well, that's a genuinely good little parable, though. Yeah, because it's- it's- it's now used for, um, people who are scared to sort of slag something off because it's- it's sort of like really cool and that, and I don't want to be the one that that shouts it and then one person goes hold on very I've very seen briefly this. Carl very very briefly right. uh, the king wants some new clothes right he's the king he goes who's gonna make me some new clothes various people come to me he says I don't know that I don't know that it's not interesting enough one guy who's just a bit of a con artist he comes mm. along he goes I've made you this magic suit look and it's nothing he it's goes invisible. put it on the king puts on nothing because there is nothing but thinks there's something because you know he wants to buy into it and everything and he goes it's the finest stitching he goes look at it can you see it uh, 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 no uh, they ask that only a genius can see how good this suit is and the king goes yeah yeah it's brilliant it's brilliant yeah. It's great. And he goes out and just, is it a woman or a little kid? Well, everyone's goes, applauding. They're going, you look great. Even though his tackle's hanging out, he's, you know, he's nothing. Even though he's got a king size, sort of like, bit of meat and two veg, yeah. wobbling, dragging down the street. <laughs> exactly. And right. then one little boy goes, he's not wearing anything. The king is in the all together, the all together. Know that one? So, well, did anyone else buy one? Or was. Oh. Okay, play record. Play record, Carl. Play record. Carl, just play a song. Jesus. Travis, writing to reach you on XFM 104.9, alright? Couple of emails here, try and respond to our, uh, requests for, um, nursery rhyme related information. Oh, go on. Nikki Williams says that she was at infant school and she had a nursery rhyme book and the book, in the book, and this may, again, may just be the illustrations, but apparently the ten in the bed in there were small baby monkeys, which you'll be loving, Carl. But, uh, again, I, I suspect that might just be the illustrations. Illustrate that the, yeah. The, uh, I remember I had a book of nursery rhymes when I was little and, uh, my, my brother, um, it was, uh, older than me, I was about five, so he was about sixteen, and I remember him and his mate just absolutely cracking up because it said, um, up Jack trot and home, uh, up Jack got and home did trot as fast as he could caper, he went to bed and bandaged his knob, N-O-B, with vinegar and brown paper. I've since found out that knob is like the old English for head, but I didn't know why they were laughing. Of course. They were just cracking yeah, up. This, yeah, this yeah. was, whenever one of my mates' brothers came around, he, he got, said, where's your nursery rhyme book? And he'd read it to him. Yeah. And it was just the funniest thing in the world. The, uh, the brown paper and vinegar was a popular method, because didn't Jack and Jill use that? They used something similar. No, that was Jack and Jill. That was Jack and Jill. Yeah, that's it? Jack when he broke his crown, yeah. which obviously, oh, that means his head as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he scratches his skull, on a sort of like an outcrop of rock. Yeah. And then, uh. Is that still used the brown paper and vinegar? I, d I don't think it is. I don't know, maybe in Manchester they're still <laughs> using that, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, Tracy and John Burton say that they, uh, reckon a Humpty Dumpty was actually a cannon that used to sit on the walls of the castle, uh, in Colchester where they lived. That, that makes sense. Yeah. That would make sense. on a wall. Sense. I had a great fall walking, so I couldn't put them together again. So, it, he had a Oh, they broke the cannon or it meant it exploded. Maybe the cannon the fell apart. Because people used to get blown up by cannons just doing it wrong, didn't they? Sure. Which is 
a hoist by your own petard. Right. Where that comes from. Right, right, Coming right. back and blowing up in your face. Does that make slightly more sense, because you would want to send for the King's men then? Yeah, and the horses. I think the horses uh, just came along anyway. Well, they that, were well, that, it, that was- that was quicker. <laughs> sure. And the quick king's men, it took them about three minutes with the horses there in about a minute. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah. but I mean, if it blew up, there's nothing I could do. Yeah. So we got to the bottom of that. See, that educational, Carl. See, this is real education. Mm. You know what it's I mean? It's got a bit heavy, though, doesn't it? What, hey, what, Humpty Dumpty? Yeah, it has got a little bit heavy. Let's well, try and let's dumb it down a little bit. What do you want to do? Mary, Mary, quite contrary? We're doing Rockbusters in a bit. Hang on a minute. What? Before you even get to Rockbusters. Oh man alive, there are loads more verses to Old Mother Hubbard. Are there? I'm gonna digest these while we play the ads, and I'll see if there's any salient information I can give you afterwards. Brilliant! Excellent. Long time coming. Oh. Delays. Long time coming on XFM 104.9. With Vicky Gervais, Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkerton for the last time. XFM 104.9. Sad. Um, we've established that Hubbard went to the cupboard, Rick. Yeah. Get the dog a bone, the cupboard was empty. Yeah. As we all know. And so the dog, the dog didn't have any. End of story, so the dog didn't have any. Well, no, 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 no. Oh, wait. Go on, what? Uh, what it what, turns what, what, out what? there's a, what appears to be something like 15 other verses. Not really. Unbelievable. Well, I'm not gonna go through all of them, Rick. Right. Um, any, 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 um, basically, any information? Well, basically, I can tell you straight away that the dog, the dog, uh, initially had none. Yeah. She went to the baker's to buy him some bread. When she came back, the poor dog was dead. Right, you're pretty upset about that. Yeah. She went to the joiners to buy him a coffin. When she came back, the poor dog was laughing. I don't know what he's up to. Right. She took a clean dish to get him some tripe, <laughs> but when he came back, when she came back, he was smoking a pipe. I mean... Hang on, so the dog was winding her up then at the beginning, being dead. I mean, he's pushing his luck. But, especially if she's already depressed. But, do you know, if I was that dog, right, and I live with old Mother Hubbard, Right, all that faffing around. I'm going. I know there's no bones in the cupboard. <laughs> exactly. Right. What do you mean you're going to get me some bread? I'm a dog. Yeah. I don't. I'm not interested in bread. Get get me some hamburgers. Yeah. So I, I, I'd start. I think I'd start winding her up. She went to the hour house to get him some beer. When she came back, the dog sat in a chair. See, I just <laughs> said the dog had turned queer. <laughs> yeah. Make it, it rhyme the leaves well, and also it? get a little. You know, he smoke. Uh, uh, he's smoking a pipe. He's having a laugh. I'm beginning to wonder. He's if bent. I'm, He's been. I'm beginning to wonder if this <laughs> is based on fact, though, in any way, because she went to the grocers to buy him some fruit. When she came back, he was playing the flute. He's gay. <laughs> no, He's it's, gay. it is the flute. It's not. Uh, now this, I didn't even know there was a goat involved. She went oh <laughs> no! She went to the tailors to buy him a coat. When she came back, he was riding the goat. Yeah, there you go, dirty <laughs> little. Oh, what? She went He's to the hat. Well, she went to the hatters to buy him a hat. When she came back, he was feeding the cat. <laughs> I mean, I can't believe it. So I've, I'm, I'm thinking the pipe's a crack pipe. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You, I think the gay thing's beginning to stand up. Go on. She oh. went to the barbers to buy him a, <laughs> to buy him a wig. When she came back, he was having a frig. <laughs> he was dancing a jig. <laughs> <laughs> he's dancing a jig. If you're dancing a jig. Oh, um, he's dancing a jig, smoking a pipe, shagging a go. This is a, this is a bit of a left field one, though. She went to the cobbler's to buy him some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I like these shoes! I bet they're here. I bet they're high heels. Wait but, a second, though. But, she went to the cobbler's to buy him some shoes. When she came back, you're never gonna believe this. What? He was reading the news. <laughs> <laughs> um, Brilliant! She went to the seamstress to buy him some linen. Again, don't know why. When she came back, the dog was a spinning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she went to the hosiers to buy him some hose. When she came back, he was dressed in his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Why did she want to but this is this is the big payoff that we've been building to. Right. The dame made a curtsy, the dog made a bow, the dame said, your servant, the dog said, bow wow. Right. I mean- Okay. I, you know- <laughs> Um, I'm gonna probably do a few more verses okay. during the next <laughs> during song. the course of the show? Yeah. Listen, uh, before we move on, I should just say that we've had various people saying what was in the bed and what was the final line of the bed yeah. thing. What do they care? Uh, it's extraordinary, isn't it? We've talked about politics in the past, yeah. great music, we played great songs. Yeah, we've got monkey news coming up talking about politics. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but Danny's said that apparently it ends with one in the bed, little one said good night. Because he was all he, happy, he had the bed to himself, and there's, Ava, nine of his, there's nine of his mates piled on the floor. Rick, but Ava counters that by saying, actually, one of the better little ones said, come back, because he felt lonely. So, We're never gonna get I don't know, this. I don't know, Rick. This is the same as the Kennedy thing. <laughs> it's so it's, it, it, there's loads run. of different opinions. Conspiracy we don't, theories. I know, we, we don't know what's going on. But is Jimmy Webb, go on, I, I, I,
Jimmy Webb, Galveston, fantastic version on XFM, 104.9. You know what, Steve? I know that, I know, you know, people are gonna miss the talk about little Chinese fellas, little gay fellas, little monkey fellas, and all that. <laughs> yeah. But I think they're gonna miss some great tunes as well. I hope, I'd, ho I'd hope so. She went to the jewellers to buy him a clock. But when she got back, <laughs> what was he sucking? Yeah. <laughs> a chalk ice. A chalk ice. Fine. So fine. Respectable. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I. I sort of feel like you know one thing we've never done, Rick, is we've never pandered to people. But as it's the last show, um, we've got to give the audience what they want. Right. What's this? Well, yeah. And I was going to say things they don't want as well. Oh, right. and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. And well, just basically to keep a smile on Carl's face. Yeah. Uh, I say a smile, a sort of not quite a scowl. Yeah, he never really smiles. So, um, yeah, it's it's just really as a, a chance for him to have a go. It's like, you know, you, you indulge a, an annoying child. The only time Carl laughs is for no apparent reason. Yeah. What mm. do you think, like- What do you mean? Well, it's sometimes you'll go, <laughs> and I know you'll be thinking of what a monkey could do. Yeah, it's like- it's like people who've had electroshock therapy. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> tied down biting on exactly, something. Yeah. Biting on a big leather pad. Uh, let me just tell you briefly what the, the prices are. It's that a number that of looks like a piece of shit. You know, <laughs> <that's> <laughs> well, let me tell you, Rick, let what me tell it? you. There's a number of, uh, there's a number but, of mediocre CDs and DVDs. That, that is real but time. But mainly, that? what about this? It's the Lord of the Rings Collector's Edition. Oh. What, the movies, you're thinking? No, it's no. the Radio 4 adaptation. It's, uh, it's only 14 hours long, Rick. Oh, that is, throw that away. <laughs> so, pop that in the bin. <laughs> so, that's that the, is just, <laughs> just pop it, either pop it in the bin or send it to some poor bastard who wins this quiz. <laughs> exactly. If you're willing to take part in the quiz, you deserve, uh, Forty hours, you'd be like yeah. wasted with that uh, Tolkien <laughs> tripe. <laughs> <laughs> so right, yeah. What are the clues then, uh, Carl? Right, as always, just you know, cryptic clues no. and that. Initials of a band or an artist. Yeah. Work it out. Yeah. Win the win the stuff. Yeah. Um, Email only. Yeah, Ricky Dot Gervais, XFM Dot Co UK. First clue is as follows. Um, <laughs> The, the Jamaican fella wrote a review for- <laughs> 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 It's the good old Jamaican fella. He's back! The oh, Jamaican fella. It's the last show and the little Jamaican fella's made an appearance. <laughs> this uh, normally suggests that you need to think of the answer in a Jamaican accent. Yeah. Or not. Yeah, or not. Yeah, so any accent. Say, go or an accent. <laughs> or pronounce the word slightly differently. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, go on. The Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Alright? Yeah. DC is on the initials. DC? D for yeah. Derek? Yeah, okay. DC. The Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. That's the first one. Um, second one. It's three of them. Second one is, uh, we should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, Copperfield, The Great Soprendo, Tommy Cooper, and Darren Brown. We should all vote for them. Why is that? What was. <laughs> what? <laughs> I've just got the first one. E S. E S. Right? E S. Okay. And the last one, um, Steve, what did your dad do? Huh? Steve, what did my dad do? What did your dad do? Is that the question, or are you asking me? Well, uh, Ricky, what did your dad do? You can work on anyone. What right. did your dad do? Alright. Right? That's E. Right? What so, did your dad do? Quickly ag again, the Jamaican fella wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Right? DC. <laughs> Second one, we should all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, yeah, yeah, Copperfield, yeah, right. Great to No, but that's important. Right? <laughs> <laughs> E.S. and the last one, you know, Steve, what did your dad do? Right? Okay. The initial E. Ricky so. Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We don't want to speak to you, please don't phone up. Remember, you could win some Lord of the Rings <laughs> tripe. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. right. There's right. no more on XFM. Right. 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 Last right. Rockbusters ever, thank you. Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Faith No More in their version of I'm Easy on XFM 104.9 with your HD Merchant Carl Pilkington. Rick, we- For the last time. We, um, we've only well, really got three topics of discussion on this show, I think you'd agree with that. Uh, Little Chinese Fellas. Little Chinese Fellas. Um, Monkeys. Monkeys. And the guys. The gay people. Yeah. Um, we're hoping to cover all those subjects today. Monkey News is coming later. I'm yeah. sure we can find something to discuss about gay people. We've but done guys. We've done a few guys. I suppose we talked the dog, about the, 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 dog the, dog the dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah big time, big time, big time. Um, I think you'll be enjoyed, but this is something that's got sent through to us. Uh, I'm not quite sure who by, but thanks oh. very much for it. It's a story that was in the, uh, the press recently. I'm not gonna give you the headline. I think it gives away too much. I think, Carl, you'll be particularly interested in it. A farmer in eastern China, oh, yeah. uh, there we go. basically, he paid £1,300 um, or the Chinese equivalent, to marry the, a woman, and, uh, basically she refused to sleep with him after the wedding, complaining that she felt unwell. 
Um, six days after the ceremony, she tried to run away, but the farmer followed her. They f he found her in some neighbouring town. They grappled together. The bogus bride's false breasts fell off. And he's hard. <laughs> it wasn't that is hard after his old tricks. It, it wasn't his hard. Trying to do another uh, show in Chinese this time. But it was. It was a man. Oh and, no. Um, uh, Apparently, uh, yeah, it was an arranged marriage. I don't know who sorted that out. Did he get his money back? <laughs> I think Because I think men are cheaper than women, uh, to marry in China, I think, I think it's... But, um, yeah, I mean, you've got to be, you've got to be pretty simple not to realise that the person you're marrying's a, a bloke, surely. Well, no, he, if he didn't, if he didn't have a little look, what, what, what was, uh, you know, in the back of the store, he just saw the shop window, saw a lovely, lovely little Chinese lady there. Yeah. Right? You know the, the lovely hair, real breasts. The, well, um, um, there's, there's lumps where the breasts should be. Yeah. I can only assume they are breasts. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not, you know, you know, you, you see women walking around going, "What are they breasts?" Or are they, you know, stealing sort of grapefruits. <laughs> no, <they're probably> <laughs> but you, wouldn't you, there you, have been a lot? I mean, wouldn't there be a quite a sort of long in initiation period when they sort of first was, uh, get introduced and so on? Not if he put his money down. He came and they said, "Well, I want a bird quickly. Here's a, here's a grand. Sure, get me one." They're not going to say. Uh, do you want real breasts or <laughs> they're just gonna assume? Sure. Yeah, he's one. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, little yeah. Chinese But who is lady. he paying? Where is he buying this woman from? From the Chinese lady shop. <laughs> lady Lovely. shop. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. uh, yeah. I think, uh, there's one in Chinatown, I think. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah. Not really a town. Not exactly a town, more a novelty street. And the roads are very slippery. Very sticky. I tell you what, though. What? I was looking at their menus when I was walking home. They don't waste anything, do they? Why? Duck's tongue on the menu. <laughs> Yeah, but it's better when you say it. <laughs> All right, duck's tongue. A duck's tongue, really? You sure that wasn't the proprietor? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Coldplay, warning sign on XFM, 104.9. Carl, look at that. What is it? What is it? It's an apple. Right, right, okay. What am I doing to it? You're messing with it. Yeah, and what's happening to it? It's gone off a bit. Yeah! Would you kiss it for no, a quid? No. <laughs> How's it going? Would no. you just like just kiss kiss no, it? No, I wouldn't. Why? And what, quid? what are we doing this for? <laughs> <laughs> I think I read this same feature on Woken. I'm not sure. <laughs> Seriously, Carl, I'm intrigued to know how much would you yeah, have to be paid kiss to kiss it. Ricky's nipple? Not suck it or lick it or anything like that. Just mm, like that, just on the nipple. Five grand. Five grand to kiss my nipple? Well, if you do it for five, you do it for one. A thousand pounds cash to kiss no, my no, nipple. No, I'm not doing it. You're joking. A thousand pound to kiss my nipple. Come on, it's the last show. No, I'm not T doing it. Two thousand. If you had the money there and like, if you had it there now, I might do it. For what? I'm not doing it. Five hundred quid. No, it's not taking it down. What? What? I, what's happening? To two the, grand. Two grand. To, so it's you gone down from five to two straight away. Look, look. Steve, what's going Did, on? I seriously think I'd like to see you kiss his nipple well, for not, two thousand. Well, no, it's not going to happen, is it? So. <laughs> If Steve wants it and I want it, that's two to happen. one. It's not gonna happen. I thought it was a democracy, this show. You're not educating Ricky or what? E email in if you'd like to see, <laughs> or rather hear, <laughs> Carl kiss Ricky's <laughs> nipple for two thousand pounds. This is not gonna happen. <laughs> Come on, Carl. <laughs> right. It's not like he's Jono's nipple. No. Next. <laughs> Next. Okay, okay. Well, Would you uh, kiss this for uh, <laughs> Right, okay, quick. wrong but Now, what are you doing? What are you doing educating Ricky? Do you want to set that Why up? Why were you looking, by the way? Why were you looking at that? You didn't have to look at that. We uh, doing? Yeah. Go on. Right, uh, this is when I teach Ricky stuff. Um, just give him some headlines to sort of tease him into what's <laughs> going on this week that you might want to know about. Yeah, go right. on. Um, is that important, Ant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. you yeah. got that. Yeah. That'd be something to do with ants. So, uh, uh where there's a way, where, where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> right, okay, that'd be right. sort of like sucking mints. Uh, hook, line, and good thinkers. <laughs> okay. Right, so which of these you choosing? Uh, uh, I'll have the, uh, the, is that important? What you want, you want to do it now? I was just oh, going to yeah, 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 come on. All it's right. Christmas Eve, open one, come on. Uh, you know I don't like anteaters. Why? Okay, so I should just point out to people <laughs> that as far as Carl is convinced, the stories that he's <laughs> about to relate are absolutely 100% true. Yeah. You be the judge of whether he's seen them on the internet, of course they're true, go on. Anteaters, yeah. Why don't you like them? I've told you before, I just don't, sort of, it annoys me that an animal's named after what it eats. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need yeah, it. Yeah, but it didn't choose it, did it? Yeah, but if there's nothing else that it can be called, it's like, oh, what's it do? I don't know. What's it eating? It's eating ants, right, let's call it an anteater. 
Why, it's not, what, not good enough. But why are you annoyed at it, though, for someone else calling it being lazy? Because it obviously doesn't do anything else. Do you know what I mean? But what- what do you want to call The Chartered Surveyor? Well, whatever, just a proper name. What's a proper name? Well, I'm just saying- But tell me an animal that's a proper name to you. A beaver. That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> why is that a proper name? <laughs> It doesn't matter anyway. That's that. I don't understand what they're right, about. You, right. you and Auntie have got issues. <laughs> you know? Okay. I don't. Sometimes I genuinely don't understand what his thought processes yeah. are. Go on. Right. Okay. And Auntie, you don't like Auntie ears because they just eat ants and that's what they're named that's after. Go on. Right. Um, <laughs> do you know that <laughs> an ant eater yeah. can uh, stick its tongue in and out 160 <laughs> times in a minute? No, didn't know that. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's rubbish. Thanks. No, but do you think that's good? Because I, I, I don't know what, 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 what do you mean? So I call Norris McWhirter? What do you mean do I think that's good? What, compared to what? You see, I, I, I read it and thought, so what? So it's interesting. Well, we think so what as well. So, so you still put it down as something interesting to tell me? <laughs> no, but it's the fact that that is meant to be amazing. I Who's did claiming it's amazing? I did 148 last night in a minute, right? <laughs> Oh, well, hold on. There's my nipple. How many could you do if you if, if the, it meant you had to touch my nipple at the end? Two thousand pounds. Ash, Burn Baby Burn, XFM one hundred four point nine. We do talk twaddle. Oh, gosh. I mean, it, I don't know why we haven't got complaint. We haven't got any complaints, have we? No, we've, had, we've had one. No one listening. No, it must be that, because Kilroy, he, he's probably got a big show and he's- it's all over the place, yeah. but, you know, it's- mind you, he- uh, you know, I'd be annoyed if he'd have said that about me. Yeah. But, he's gotta be careful who he annoys, because he will end up having to move him with Salmon Rushdie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Is Salmon, he'd, uh, is he still on the run? No. No, he's out- I've, I've, I've seen him twice, yeah. I think he's out all the time now. I bet his flat's a pigsty. Sure. It was not neat when he was living with 400 CIA people yeah, and yeah, a couple yeah, yeah. of- yeah. You, uh, remember he went into hiding, I, I think it was mid-80s, I can't remember exactly. Yeah, that's all right. He went into hiding, he was in there, he was hiding, basically, surrounded by security guards, confined to his flat for about ten years or something. I'd have thought so, yeah. Have you ever seen a picture of his missus? <laughs> yeah, are you annoyed? Well, I mean, man alive, she's like a sort of, I think she's like a former Miss India or something. Stunning. Yeah. yeah. Have you seen a picture of him? <laughs> 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 I mean, he might be a great man and a talented writer and an intellectual fella, but, Jesus. <laughs> Do something with the beard. Was well, yeah, but he's busy, isn't he? What? He's busy writing. How did he pull her? When he was just basically in there, in his flat. I don't know. Internet. <laughs> Possibly. Just just <laughs> got to know him, and then uh, she kept saying, "Send a picture." He goes, "No, no I'm not sending a picture. Come round." Yeah. Read some of the books. They're brilliant. They're brilliant. She goes, "Well, I, yeah. Now I'm in love with you. Let's have yeah. a look." All right. Well, I'm in love with you now. So. Yeah. You know, he's to. going, got my own place. <laughs> got my own place, yeah. I got, I got a few staff. <laughs> yeah. There's a few exactly. other people hanging around. Exactly. Don't, don't worry about you it. Know. I mean a lot. I'll tell you something else that'll annoy you. Yeah. Stephen Hawking, not only married, but dumped her for his, uh, nurse. Extraordinary, isn't it? So he's pulling birds left, right and centre. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's true that I, you know, I mean, not so much now, but years ago I was not the ladies' man. But that you I are now. Really. You weren't sort of You weren't, know, exactly. You weren't the James Bond type that you've, uh, I wasn't well, James Bond of TV comedy. Because I remember, I I remember Carl, when he, you first met him about three years ago, what did you think? Just a bit odd. <laughs> <laughs> I love it! And that's coming from him. I know. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, it used to really annoy me, talking of- do you remember there was that story, I think it was a world record breaking attempt, there was a bloke, I think it was up in a car park, in a pub car park, oh, in sort of Leeds or something. No, Mansfield. Mansfield. It was a car park in Mansfield, and he broke the record for being buried alive. Being buried alive. I mean, and he was literally in a casket. Like, in, not David Blaine out in the lovely yeah. sunshine with loads of Jonathan Ross waving to you. Yeah. No, none of that. Paul McCartney Sorry calling you up. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, he was buried alive in the dark with just a tube yeah. for communication. And I they think put he was buried, down. About, he's buried about ten feet underground. He, yeah. There's a tube which they people would communicate and send and stuff down. And put water down and- And, and I remember reading the story, I, kept, I was interested in it, I remember reading it, and there was one element of the story. You would think it was really a cheap holiday. Well, you know, <laughs> you're not going to pay those prices. 400 quid, ho seasons, you're having a laugh. That's nothing. <laughs> Mansfield Car Park. And, uh, there was another one. It said in the, in the news report, it said that while he was down in the ground, he began and ended a relationship with a woman. 
while he was down there, some fan who was a fan of what he was doing, he started communicating with her through the tube. They, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but they began a relationship and it ended. And I have to say, I remember thinking, you know, it, when you read that there's a man, how did it end? Well, Why I did she go that this isn't working? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's twice you've stood me up. Yeah. Well, I'm, I can't get out, can I? But I remember thinking at the time, you know, I, I was to say I was not the sort of the ladies man that I am now. I remember at the time reading it and thinking, there's a bloke, you know, he's pulling women ten feet underground <laughs> through a tube. Through a tube. I'm, I'm, I'm out and about yeah. with some of the most expensive hair products <laughs> on the market. <laughs> I've got to sit down and ask myself some very serious questions. Oh dear. Extraordinary. I don't know if he did the, if he did the, um, the, the, the world record attempt. I don't know if he broke it. I don't know how that happened, but, uh, good luck to him. I don't what, know do, what do you mean a hole though? Like, a, like what? The, the, a proper thing or is he moving about? How big is no, it? No, it was just that, I think it was just buried alive in a casket. I don't know. Just down there. Probably laying on his back maybe. Just waiting for little bits of but, water. But could he get out if he wanted to? Well, yeah, he could say, can you get me out? He couldn't just leave and then come back. There was people- So what, someone's there, then? Uh, no, they buried him and were saying, <laughs> well, we better go back in a couple of weeks, see how he's doing. What do you mean, someone's there? Of course there's someone there. Norris McWhirter, for one, I'd imagine, going, <laughs> three days. <laughs> just a few more to go. And what, why- Is it Norris or- who's, who's alive, Russell or Norris? Uh, I think it's Norris. Right, yeah. Thinking of, yeah. What's that? It annoys me a bit, all this sort of, you know- Getting in a hole and in a box and all that and people going, oh, that's, that's good. I mean, if he was doing something when he was down there, making something or whatever, you'd go, that's, that's quite clever, but I don't understand all the fuss about, I don't know, people are just making a fuss about things that aren't that clever these days, it's just, you know what I, I mean? I don't reckon he beat Anne Frank's record. No, I think she's got the record. I know, yeah, and she did something, she wrote a book. She so you me. must be, you must think that she's pretty good then. Yeah, but at least she did something. Yeah, I know, yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's what, that's what I mean. There's some fuss. Um, about a woman who's going up Everest on a bike. Right. <laughs> Someone's walked it. That's harder than going on a bike. <laughs> no, it's not. Of course it is. Of course it's not. Of course it is. Not walking uphill. Is better than riding about on a bike's better than walking everywhere. Even yeah, not uphill. Well. No. Don't agree with me. Mm. Why do people get off their bike and walk it up a hill? They don't always. I see people. No, but why? Why do they? When people yeah, are going up a hill saying. on a bike, but they get off just and push saying, the bike. Just saying. No, what? What? Why is that? It doesn't matter. Because it's. Do you think it's because it's harder? They go. I tell you what. This would be a lot easier on the bike. But I tell you what. I'm, I'm a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I'll get off and walk up this along, hill. Then, you do. Go along then. Clap for them. That. You know what I mean? When someone's doing a London Marathon in a car, you can go and clap them because that's just the same as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> it's not hard. Play record. Imbecile. So Alive, Ryan Adams on XFM, 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, for the last time. Well, you might do some other stuff later. Some oh yeah, I mean, for, yeah, for, for a little while at least. Well, we won't be around for, yeah, foreseeable future. Uh, better, better things to do, bigger fish to fry. Well, you've got your music show that you'll do, which will be good. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. the other radio stations are just, more interesting. Just, I think we've just got enough energy left for the last 35 minutes. Yeah. We've given them a lot, Steve. We've, we've given them a lot. We've come in here, week in, week out, every Saturday. Never late. We've always given them, you know, 30%. Every, every really, <laughs> really poor, they go, oh, 30% yeah. of energy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Now, how did that start? People going, you've got to give 110%. Yeah. I just, it's just my heart sinks and I go, oh, mm. oh, 100%. I say, um, you've got to give 110%. I go, I can't. I, can, I, I'll give, I'll tell you what, I probably won't even give 100 because you never know, but I'll give as close to 100 as I can stand. Yeah. And that's, that's all I'm. I'm saying that to a, a drill sergeant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give nearly a hundred. <laughs> and that's, you know, that's more than you, more than most, I think you'll find. <laughs> Maybe if you appear on Celebrity Fact Club? Well, I don't think I need to, do well, I? Well. Carl, do you think I need to go on that? Hmm. When you had your nipple out. It was a bit, it was pointing it was downwards, was it? A little bit. Even, can I though, just, even though it was erect, it was pointing toward uh, my knees. Can I just, um, point out that we've had more requests for Carl to kiss your nipple than we have answers to Rockbusters? Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> well, well, it's a nice show, Carl. Come you've got to give the punters what they want. Uh, in the webcam, and just a little, a peck, a little peck Ooh, on the yeah. nip. A little, little Carl, peck. Carl, that is just out of order. The show Ooh, must go on. You've yeah. got to give people what they want. I'm doing it. Why? Why not? 
What's wrong with lips it? Lips on nipple? What's what? up with lips on nipple? You hear about stuff like this, and then, but like, I might enjoy it, and the next thing it's like, Suzanne, can you leave? Cos, you know what I mean? I like fellas. <laughs> That's like an episode of Kilroy! <laughs> oh god! Oh, I'll tell you this. Pilkington, are you thinking oh, I'm thinking exactly the same as you're thinking. I was reading the paper today. The show's been axed. It's axed. But they're keeping the show on at the same time. It's gonna have a different name, different host. Hello. Pilkington. Oh, come on. Hello, welcome to Pilkington. Oh, Carl, would- what would you do? If we give you a subject, will you just run through what you might say about it or what questions you asked? What sort of stuff? Okay, sort of stuff like um, okay, um, Steve. Steve's um, uh, fifteen. I'm fifteen, and my dad wants to have a sex change. So I'll, I'll play the dad, right? Um, uh, okay, I'm I'm Jeff. Um, I'm Jeff from Luton. I'm uh, a fifty-four year old plumber, right. and uh, I've decided. And this is my uh, this is my son, um, Paul. Uh, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, you sure to be Paul? Yeah, I got to be Paul. Okay. Yeah. Um, so ask me some questions. So what what what's what's going on? Um. <laughs> Well, I just- I, I'm not happy with this body. Um, I've always felt that I was a woman trapped in a man's body. Have you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, Very I just- I just- I just feel- I think I'd be happier, um, as a woman. And, you know, it's- it's for him to accept it, really, because I'd have accepted anything that he wanted to do or, you know, and it doesn't change well, anything. No, I know, but I mean, it won't change anything. I, you know, I still love you and I'll still be your father. Um, I can't believe I agreed to come on national TV. I'm gonna get <laughs> some- taken out of me at school. Uh, really? Man, alive. Well, you know, with that, you've got to go through lots of stuff, but I mean, don't- don't think of me any different. What does Mum think of all this? Well, Mum- Mum doesn't- she doesn't want it, really. But I mean, she- I'm not- I'm- I'm- I'm not gonna throw away the knob and bollocks, I'm gonna keep that for her in case she ever wants to use that, but I just- I just don't want them attached to me, I'm gonna have them off, I'm gonna have some lovely pair of tits put on, and a, a nice little means down there, but it doesn't- but, I'm not bent. Mm -hmm. I still fancy- I still fancy my, my wife and that, and, you know- Okay. Well, thanks for coming in today. <laughs> God, brilliant! That's what? your audition for Pilkington. Well, <laughs> what what can I say? I'm not a doctor, right? But what would you? Well, come on, ask me questions. questions but what? Discussion. Ask no, me, I must be set with my dad because he wants to become a woman. But we're saying stuff like, "Well, dear, but you mean you've had a son and he's going through an awful day. Should, should you think of him? Shouldn't you put his feelings? Should you think of your son before you go doing that? Yeah, but if I'm not happy with who I am, how can I live a lie? I, 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 I'd go through my whole life living a lie just to, because he might go through a little bit of embarrassment. You know, he's old enough um, to realise now that uh, you know I love him, and uh, I just, I just need, to, I just, I just need to have some tits and a minute. On me. Well, thanks for coming in. Oh, Christ it's almighty! Well, what, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, no, so it's right. disappointing. Go anyway, on. Rockbusters, right? Uh, right. First clue was uh, Jamaican fellow wrote a review for Phoenix Knights. Yeah. Right, that was the cryptic clue. The initials were DC. Yeah. What is it? Come on, now you tell me. It's uh, it's Define Comedy. All right. Define Comedy. It's a Divine Comedy. <laughs> All right. What so, is that? <laughs> That's well, just do the accent again. Do the accent again. Oh, it's just divine comedy. That's the answer. Do the answer. No, again. Do it again. You've got the answer. It doesn't matter. Let's move on. Right? <laughs> Second one. We could all vote for Paul Daniels, David Blaine, Copperfield, Great Soprendo, Tommy Cooper, and Darren Brown. Why Go is on. that? E S were the initials. Go on. Elec trick six. Right. What? Elec trick six. It works. So don't say it like that. <laughs> what? I, don't, I, don't, what I don't know what it means. Right. Well, there's six people there who do tricks and that. Right, I'm saying we should vote for them, so you elect them. Yeah, but he said elect. 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 Trick six. No, elect though. Elect. Elect's not a word, is it? And the last one. Uh. Really, elect's a word. Elect. Steve. You don't mean Alec, do you? It's not Alec Park. You're not trying to do Alec Park. The third one. Steve, what did your dad do? I don't know. That was E. Could work for anyone. It didn't have to be Steve, right? That was uh, Erasia. Right? Erasia. He he it it. No, it doesn't work either. It doesn't work either. Does work. No, does it doesn't work. work. Doesn't work. Who's the winner? None of them work. None well. of them work. Another pile of crap <laughs> from the you. for the mind of little stupid. Oh, I'll give the prices. Dopey too. little 
Oh. I'm going to give the prizes to Martin Williams from oh. Flintshire. I don't know where Flintshire is. Uh, he says that he's uh, promised to listen to the Lord of the Rings, <laughs> and by listen he means sell them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, oh, um, thanks for coming in. Stupid. The end of Rockbusters from the stupid little shitty brain. I'm going to say it of Pilkington. Possibly my favourite song of all time, after the Gold Rush by Neil Young, and that's for um, Carl's lookalike Boyd, um, who's uh, actually on Justin Lee Collins' show after us about five. He's not it? really a lookalike. He, uh, oh, he is. Yeah, he's got a bald head. <laughs> More like Gandhi. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, in, well, he's in the toga. He does a little bit. I don't think Gandhi wore a toga. <laughs> no, so what are you, uh... What, what did he do? Oh, dear. What he did just he sat around, to be honest, Carl. Didn't want to get involved. Didn't do much. Just said, let's not, don't have a go, just be careful. Yeah. Don't go mental, don't start fighting, let's all calm down a little bit. He's the one in the pub that goes, okay, stop this, stop mucking around. Um, we were educating Ricky earlier, Carl, I wonder if we should resume that, as the clock is ticking away. Alright, uh, you got two bits of info. That you could be, uh... Leaving the building with today, right? You've got <laughs> where there's a will, there's a way. Yeah, I have that one. <laughs> um, they've brought out this drug or uh, sort of tablet or something. Yeah, you've got to do it then. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Carefully researched. Yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah. which means like an eight-year-old woman can have a kid. What do you think of that? <laughs> no, it doesn't. What are you no, talking about? You can inject a woman with something. Eighty year old, and it means you know she's she's got more time on her hands now than that. It's better to have a kid. She can have a kid later on in life. <laughs> this is real life. Where there's where there's a wheel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very good. Very good. Right. Well, let's just move on from that because it's clearly drivel. No, it's it's not. I think it's a bad idea. Of course, it's a bad idea. Right. If it, even if it, I'll give you, I'll even give you that it's true and possible and might no, even. It is true and possible. Okay. It's, been well, long, you know, it's not even recent. It's like a few few weeks old. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's terrible. No, you shouldn't do it, yeah. All right, what's the final educating Ricky? So far, I'm not impressed. Get her a cat. Yeah, get her a little Pikinese. Don't, get her, don't let her have a, a child. Yeah, but it's meant to get you thinking, like like you're saying, well, she shouldn't have a kid. Or... Well, the time is five, she'll try and pick it up and her arms will break. Whose arms? <coughs> yeah, Moving on, what's good. the next one? <laughs> Would she be able to breastfeed? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she'd be able to do it standing up while he was on the floor. Talking to nipples. <laughs> Come on! There's a lovely Look, juicy pair over there. Okay, I think this is the last show. People should actually phone in and speak to Carl and try and convince no, him. That. Yeah, what's the number, Steve? Oh, oh I forget that. What's we haven't got time. Yeah, he hates answering it. We'll, we'll do it during leave the record. It, leave it, leave phone it. in if you want to speak to Carl if you have the number. Call in, try and convince Carl. Look, his little nipple. Don't want to. Yeah. Right, what we're doing? Are we, uh, What's the last educating, Ricky? Come on. Um, Hook, line, and good thinkers. Brilliant. Okay, yeah, go sounds on, good. Go on, what is it? Um. <sighs> They've uh, found a lot of fish with two heads. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? Well, <laughs> don't know. What, what do you mean they found a lot of fish with two heads? Who else? They've been messing about, basically, these scientists and stuff, yeah. and they've said, look at this we can do. Mm. And they're making loads of fish <laughs> with two heads. They actually, they can do it now and they're saying, that's good, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? <sighs> Alright, play record then. Yeah, but what do you think? I well, think if they can do that to fish, they should try and do it to you, and then at least you'll have two brains to work with. Yeah. And we might- I'd love you arguing with yourself. And you end up just- you're walking on the street and you're just head-butting each other. Just cracking- cracking Imagine heads the, in the squeezing middle. fun you'd have, really. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd bang them together. It'd be like one of those canakas <laughs> you used to have <laughs> yeah. on the playground on the string. I'd just whack them together. I hit you over the window, didn't I, to see what the noise meant today, mm. didn't I? Yeah. What? Just if I had two heads, right, <laughs> <laughs> would I be able to sort of- do shifts. Do you know what I mean? Say, say if, say if this is a start or something, they're trying it out with fish and that with two heads. You'd be two different people. You don't, you can't think like you're one. It doesn't make sense. That you'd, if you had two heads, you'd have two brains. You'd have, you yeah. know. Well, that's all right. But say if we did the same job, well, we'd we'd be doing the same job. Yeah, you could. So you could say, right, you work through the night. You'd both, you'd, you'd, you'd both, you'd take it in turns to do your job badly and moan about it. Yes, it'd be fine. That's He's weird, giving it yeah. some serious thought. I know, yeah. And so is his other head. <laughs> yeah. But also, they're saying there's like a fish shortage. And mm -hmm. I was wondering whether they're doing like, they're trying to make that better. 
Do you know what I mean? So yeah, well, as, like as, a, as, the, as the head is a bit you throw away, it'd be perfect. No, but when they do a head count like they do, that's what they do, they do like They, they, what, they count fish, they get fish, but okay, just end the line, one, two, I think you'll find we're one, sir. Don't, don't answer back! Rick, um, I should just point out that I feel- <laughs> Don't answer back! Come on, I think Carl, um, has offered nothing now. I think those educating Rick is repelling. And the only fish. thing, Rick, the only thing that would redeem the show is if he keeps the nipples. Because oh, the nipples! So, if you want to speak to Carl, if you have the number, call in and try to persuade Carl while his record is up. Phones are still going mad. Answer one. Just put someone out. Kings of Leon, California waiting. He was rude. He's so rude to people. They phone I'm up and they say, oh, kiss his nipple. And he goes, yeah, right. And he, he hangs up on them. Well, answer the phone. To say to Put someone. them on air. Answer the phone and you be nice to whoever it is. Be nice to them at least. Putting people on the air. Hello? Carl. Yeah, speak to Carl. What? Why don't you speak about that human monkey that was on the other day? Uh, old news, man. How long have you been listening? <laughs> Listen, can we forget the monkeys? What do you think of his nipples? Alright then, just kiss, kiss his nipple then for- I'm not gonna kiss his quid. nipple. I'd do 500 quid easy. Would you? Yeah. Well, why? What, what, why do you want me to do it anyway? What are you getting out of that? Oh, come on, mate. 500 quid. It's worth it. Yeah, but- um, He's got the money. If you'll probably get more out of him if you want. It's not <laughs> about the money, really. <laughs> <laughs> Phone the thing of Suzanne. Sit with Suzanne, you come in 500 quid and go, there you go. Just got kissed his nipple, 250 quid each. She gives me more. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not, it's not happening. All right, it's not happening. Do you just take, do you just cut him off then? Well, there's another fella there. Who's that, who's that? Hi, uh, my name's Linda. All right. All right, Linda, you all right? What would make your day, Linda? Um, if Carl actually gave it a lick, not just a kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> You're on XFM 104.9, pictures of you, and it's Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pungerton, hosting the final show. Exciting. Which means the last film quiz. Carl yeah. puts himself in a film. Claire's on next week, by the way, and then, uh, Adam and Joe. Yeah. Then Adam and Joe, brilliant. Adam and Joe coming back. So excellent. Brilliant. They're excellent. Right. Matt Lucas said he'd do a show. Give him a call, and maybe him and Dave Williams. Yeah. Might, yeah. Might Big do things that. of the huh? Might do that. Yeah. yeah. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, it'd be alright, yeah. Right, uh, the film thing, uh, this is when we get like a film, and uh, I'm in it, right? Uh, so I'm doing, uh, we talked, you know, a bit about gay fellas and that today. Yeah. So we're doing, um, When Harry Met Barry. Okay. <laughs> Alright? Yeah. Uh, and listen to this, and then there'll be a question at the end and you can win some more stuff. We've got DVDs some and that. Some more shite. Some more good CDs and DVDs and yeah. that. Alright, let's hear it. So, uh, when I met Barry, right? Mm. We've got 18 hours to come before we hit New York. I know, yeah. Brought a few books just to kill a bit of time on the journey. When I buy a new book, I always read the last page first. That way, in case I die before I finish, I know how it ends. I read a book like that once. <laughs> Not on purpose though, it's just that all the chapters have been put in the wrong order, so it's a bit annoying. Got to chapter one before I realised. Are you finished now? Yeah, I, I bought another copy of it and read it in Lanzarote, it was alright. Good read. Listen, um, we're only staying in New York for a couple of days, aren't we? Because the place does me head in a bit. Oh really? Yeah, it just stinks, doesn't it? It's a really dirty city. It's noisy. It's funny, the people who live there call it the city that never sleeps. I'm not surprised with all the noise. I couldn't agree more. Listen, I, I know you're gay in that, right? What, what is the attraction with New York for you lot? What? Because it is like the, the gay capital, isn't it? They, they all love it. Even that Roger Stewart song, you know, that Killing a Georgie, that was set in New York, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Yeah, well, that song was about a gay fellow, wasn't it, who moved to New York and ended up getting beaten up. Not a great advert for the place. You keep going there. Weird. Actually, I know why you like it. It's, cause it's, it's because it's a city that never sleeps, isn't it? You lot like going out late. You sort of run your life at a different timetable to everyone else. Are you finished now? No, oh, I'm not being funny. I'm just saying. I just, just don't think you should live your life like that. That's why not? Don't start getting angry. I'm oh, just... I think I'm entitled to throw a little anger your way. Especially when I'm being told how to live my life. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It is your life. And that's what I'm saying. Don't be dragging me into it. What? Well, you know I'm not gay, so why did you buy me a butt plug for my birthday? <laughs> not gonna use it. What do you want me to do about it? I take it back, okay? I take it back. 
Want to spend the night in the motel? No. Why not? Because you're gay and I'm straight, that's why. Why aren't you seeing anyone? Well, you, I'm seeing Suzanne again. We only split up for a few weeks when she had that funny haircut that made her look like David like a slave. It's grown again now. She looked weird, didn't she? Well, but forget that. Anyway, don't want to share a bed with you again. Not after last time. Oh, jeez. What are we supposed to do? This isn't normal, mate. Pull over. All right. Get it. All right. Forget don't it. you wish... I don't want to talk about it. How was that possible? Over. Just pull over here. Fine, but let's just... nothing. Yeah? Get a B&B. &B. I'm by that. I mean bed and breakfast. <laughs> Bum and bollocks, as you call it. Get right? one thing straight. Not interested. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. dear! Excellent. Oh little Carl Pilkington. When Harry met Barry, uh, a classic <laughs> film. What's the what? Um, <laughs> what song was I talking about? That you know. Uh, yeah, we know what York song. We do. Yeah, we got song. Yeah, okay. Artists brilliant. will do. Oh, the song title. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, okay. Email uh, only Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We can squeeze in a tune, and then I hope. Oh my god! Oh. oh, what tune have we got? How long is it? Three minutes. It's a nice one, though. Brilliant, brilliant. Bit of Amy, man. Fantastic. Right. Red Vines, Amy, man. We've been playing uh, some of our favourite tunes, and uh, after Monkey News, Jess and Lee Collins, we're going to leave you with one of our mutual favourite tracks of all time. We won't say what it is yet. We won't say what it is yet. It's, it's, a, it's a little surprise. Then Jess and Lee Collins is in with little Boyd Hilton, Carl's twin brother. Uh, the answer to Carl's quiz question. Carl, what was the question? It was, what was the song that I was talking about in that, uh... Harry Met Barry. Yeah. With Billy Crystal, uh, The Killing of Georgie. Yeah, Rod Stewart, Rod Stewart, good Stewart song. And, uh, Stephen Farron from Essex wins another, um... DVDs and stuff. Alright. Alright, well, this is the final one. Um, play the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news, ya Right, well, uh, this monkey news story, right, it's about, uh, this fella. A couple of fellas in Texas, yeah. uh, sort of running a, uh, running a farm. Yeah. Right? Just cause they, they're definitely fellas, well, they, well how <laughs> yeah, tall are they? Yeah, no, Can no, we no, just, just let them Okay, they are human beings, these they, two are human they, beings. Time's against us. They're right? running, running this farm and that, and, uh, oh. anyway, so they're outside getting the cattle, and they, he turns around, right? Says, that cow's... A couple, so couple of monkeys walking about, so he knows what's going on, right? Mm. So anyway, so... It's in Texas. They don't know what to do with the monkeys. There isn't a zoo. It's fairly barren there, isn't it? You know what I mean? Not much going about. Yeah. So the other fellow who runs the farm with him says, look, we need a bit of an hand. Right? Jesus so, uh, Christ. said, let's teach them some stuff. And the monkeys were happy with that, because they were lost anyway, right? So they had- <laughs> They had nothing to do. They were bumming around, they were looking for work. They'd hired a motor home. They'd yeah. get out of their way. Maybe it's like the Hulk, they're like the Bruce Banner <laughs> exactly. wandering around going, oh, I need some- need some work. You won't get angry, will you? So no. anyway, right, so they taught them- they taught these monkeys how to ride a horse. Right, so <laughs> they've both got a- uh, Sorry, uh, you're sure Charlton Heston's not gonna pop up? You sure got, you weren't watching a video last night and thought it was a documentary? They've both got a horse each, right? They've been given like a little lasso and all that. Oh, kind of oh yeah. don't talk right. shit, Carl. So, anyway, it's going well, and it carried on for about two years, this, right? It's Possibly. like, you know, r rounding up the cattle over yeah, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the two fellas are chatting going, it's worked out well, hasn't it? Right. right, if there's a hostile takeover and they sort of like buy up 51% of the shares so or something. So they said, for this to continue, the monkeys are getting old a bit now. We need a, we <sighs> need need a little wom woman monkey in here to sort of get some kids going <laughs> for like the future farm for, people. Forward right? planning, yeah. So they get a little woman monkey. They decided to only uh, hire monkeys <laughs> from Ireland. Why not? It's working. Why mess with something when it's not broke, right? <laughs> so they get, they get the little woman monkey in. Uh, they have kids and all that business, right? Mm. But the problem was, right? When they first got the woman monkey in, it was like, well, which one's gonna have the woman? Right. right? So, they started sort of fighting a bit and what have you. Yeah. But because they'd seen the owners of the farm don't, with like Don't guns tell me the stuff, baby monkeys didn't want to go into the family business, weren't enough to be a lawyer. They had a bit of a shoot off. <laughs> Shut up! They got two monkeys, right? And don't tell oh, Because they'd seen the owners, they'd seen the owners with guns and what have you. Yeah, 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 no, that sounds fun. So, so they, had a bit of, they had a bit of a shoot off. Yeah. That's how that, that's how they sorted it out. And who won? I think it was George, the one called George. Right. So they, had, they had, I think they had seventeen kids. The farm's still running. So that's that's like the the last little monkey news there. Good little Rick, happy ending to that one. If you were to rub your nipple against his lips while I held him down. Right, come off it now. Come on. No, I'm not doing it. Bruce Springsteen, Thunder Road, leave last it. track I'm on Next Up Ends with you, Steve. Not doing it. You can check this all out on the webcam. Oh, oh no! <laughs> I saw I got my fingers. Get his arm out of the way. Get the arm out of the way. This happened on this scum. Is, this is.
Mary's dress way. <laughs> <laughs>